uh, living with cancer, day 50. It's now early hours of Thursday morning, so theoretically 51, but we'll call it as yesterday. Friday morning, sorry. Call it as Thursday. Okay, um, this week, Tuesday, I went up for my pre-assessment for my chemotherapy. I had a video, me and Chris both went to the Lyndon Davis unit watched a video which was everything about what they do there, what the chemotherapy is, what it involves, how they do the chemotherapy, common side effects, not so common side effects, rare side effects, very rare side effects, so everything that I can expect or not expect but I know that there's an issue, that I, it's covered in there. It was a very difficult place to go around and just I mean we didn't have a guided tour we just you know you could see and it was full it was absolutely round round full of people as soon as people were leaving more people coming in so it shows just how many people have got cancer of varying degrees of varying types you know it's 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 eye-opening to say the least it's it's shocking it really is generally shocking um, did all that, went then for a hearing test, which you can lose your hearing with chemotherapy or your hearing can change. So I went for a hearing test, I was for a baseline. Not surprised really. This right ear is far worse than my left and I know why as well. My right ear has predominantly been my speaker's ear. When I go to concerts, and I've been to a lot of concerts over many, many years, I go right hand side to the stage. I don't know why, but I always seem to end up right hand side to the stage. Normally as much or as close to, if not at the front. I've got the speakers right here, just thumping in my ear all night long. That's the bass, the, you know, everything is just, you know, the bass is not laid on that off the drums and the bass guitar. You can feel the wind coming off the speakers. That isn't a surprise. I'll get my ear checked and whatever when I finish chemo and all my other treatment. It's, I'm not deaf. I just seem to feel as if I got like liquid or something. Maybe if I do this, I can feel it going shh, 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 shh. But, you know, so that was done. That's for a baseline to see if there is any issues when I'm on the chemotherapy and they have to they check and they go, oh, hang on, he's lost hearing or, you know. Um, blood test I had the week before, I've got to go for a blood test the day before my next treatments or every treatment I've got to go the day before. My treatments seem to be at the moment on a Thursday but again I suppose that could change. I've got booked in now for four rounds of chemo, not three. The fourth is booked in just in case I can't get into the hospital for my operation and they have to give me another round. Um, so that was all done Tuesday. Uh, half past ten Thursday me and Chris went to the Linda Davis event and that's when I had my first round of chemotherapy six and a half hours of treatment all through a drip um, I feel sore achy tired I could drop, I could fall asleep on a pin. I'm so tired. Um, a few bit of tingling in my hands and my feet, which that's normal. Um, my arms and my legs are so heavy. They feel so weighty, especially the arm. My left arm is where I had the drip. So that is where I felt like as if it's, it's like there's a lead weight in it. Um, I've already been told in those same terms that it's it's going to get worse. I had anti-sickness tablets this morning. Still haven't given these up, unfortunately. Medication. I've never seen nothing like it. To be quite honest, I've never seen anything like the amount of medication I have to take them. <coughs> I have to take these. Which, uh, oh God, these names are so hard. A Prepitum Sentiva, which I have to take these before 
an hour before my first chemo treatment, uh, the day after and the day after. So I've got 125 more gram to take on the day of my treatment and then I've got 280 gram um, Medicaid tablets to take. That's the size of them. That's what it shows on the thing. It looks like, to be honest, I wasn't sure if I was supposed to eat it or if I was supposed to stick it in my ass as a suppository, but it's, it's, you can swallow it. So that's my day one tablet on my treatment day, and then I have day two and day three after my treatment where I have to take those tablets as well. I've got anti-sickness tablets coming out of my ears. Absolutely coming out of my ears, I've got so many. I've got tablets that I have to take regardless. I've got a thing called dexamethasone. I've got ciprofloxane. On the Cetron, I've got tablets for if I get constipated, I've got tablets for if I get diarrhea. I've got another set of tablets, there's those, 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 I've got another set of tablets called Lopramide Hydrochloride or Chlor Chioride or something like that, I don't know got all those and these are all medication for sickness, anti-sickness tablets, you know, um, diarrhea, constipation, anything that they can think of. I obviously have to keep a regular, well Ivan's or Chris has, keep a regular, regular check on my um, temperature. Any changes, any changes in me at all, not just my temperature, just the way I am, the way I look, if I feel bad. I've got numbers to ring up. I've got, you know, I've got a massively good team behind me, I must say. That's hospital-wise. And then I've also got Chris. I've got my kids. I've got my mum. I've got my family, my brother, you know. Then I've got all my friends. I've had empty messages today of people. That, you know, it's, it's, it's very, very humbling to know that people are generally concerned about my welfare and my well-being, you know, which... You know, it, it's great. It's brilliant. It's so good that people are concerned about me. And, and you know, this is the first day, first day of chemo now. It's day 50 of having cancer. So from day one of being diagnosed, we're now on day 50. I'm now getting treated. So it does seem like a long time, but. It isn't really, not in the grand scheme of things, not when you look at how many people, probably worse than me, how many people need it more than I do. How many people are waiting for it, you know? I've probably got in the queue a lot quicker than a lot of people are gonna have to wait, so, you know, it's something that, it seems a long time, but in, in, the, in the grand scheme of my, my recovery, it isn't as long as it seems. It just seems that way sometimes. You just seem to think nothing's going to change, nothing's going to happen. Then all of a sudden it's like do, 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 do. everything happens one thing after another after another. And Chris with me all the way through my treatment today, which was nice. I know, like, you know, there's not a lot she can do. She can't help me, she can't do it for me. But, you know, it's just knowing that she's there it means a hell of a lot. It's just unfortunately, again, that's a, a part of our life that, you know, a horrible part of our life that we've had to share together which you, you don't think it's gonna you know you don't think this is gonna be any part of your relationship as you get into one um but you know she was there she was with me all the way through it you know we were well looked after we were well checked on you know i could get up and go to the toilet when i wanted that was it was a bit more difficult when you've got a bloody iv drip in your arm um i spent a lot of time sleeping today as well I had all these things with me, I had book, I had comics, I had music, I had films, I had all these things to keep me occupied over the course of this treatment. I had a music on, I fell asleep listening to that. I got a book, started reading, I got 19 pages in, fell asleep with that, didn't even bother with a film, just not even worth the time. And then just fell asleep again and it's just I was just in and out of sleeping for most of the treatment. It's a six and a half hour one, so it's a long one today. My next one, supposedly, is only going to be about around an hour or so, which is next Thursday. 
that again, you know, we'll see what happens. I've got to go for blood tests on the Wednesday. They've got to be okay for him to carry on the chemo on the Thursday. Um, I did ask today just what the next week's one was. It's like, oh, is it, you know, is it a top up? Are they just topping up what's in there? And my name's Helen, I think, you know, it's a very, very nice lady. Said um, that they couldn't give it me all in one go because my body wouldn't cope with it. So this is just an add on to my treatment. It's just another part of my treatment. And they can't do it all in one session because your body just won't be able to deal with it deal with it so it shows how um, strong these, this chemo treatment is I wrapped in today as I do because I have to I have to wear my wasp t-shirt because this to be fair this t-shirt now has got a lot, lot lot more meaning to it it was the last concert I went to before being diagnosed and it was only four days before and that was with a friend of mine a real good friend of mine now but with my one of my absolute best concert buddies ever, John, who over the decades, I mean, we've seen so many good bands together, but Wasp seems to be something that me and him have both always seen to go. And it means a lot, this t-shirt, mate, because it was our last fun day out, because we didn't even, you know, we were laughing and joking about my diagnosis, uh, you know, if I have cancer, because we didn't, I didn't know if I had cancer or not, you know, we'd laughing and joking about, you know, what if this, what if that. Never in our wildest dreams believing that there was going to be the case that, yes, it was bloody cancer, you know. So, it means a lot. It's a very special concert, T-shirt from a very special concert with a very, very special guy. He knows what I feel about me, he knows how much I love him. You know, he's, he is quite literally the brother from another mother, he is. He's someone else, but it's not just him, it's him. Walters, Wayla, John, Pete, um, Stokesy, Dan, Cleggy, you know, I mean, I've got, I've got some amazingly good friends that I've been friends with for decades, and I know this is as painful for them to watch as it is for me to record sometimes, but, you know, I know that they've got my back, and we, they know full well if it was the other way around, they'd have the same with me, I'd have their back in a second, you know, that's what you do with your friends, that's what you have your friends for, your friends are there to look after you. You know, your friends do things for you, and then in 10 years, 20 years' time, they're like, Oh, do you remember all these things I did for you? That's not a friend. That's somebody who just does something because they want you to be um, as if you owe them something. Your real friends are people that go out of their way to help you for, for no reward whatsoever. I mean, John's done, pfft, John's done way more things to me for me than a lot of people. I would never have asked anybody else because I know. Well, not I wouldn't ask anybody else. I wouldn't ask certain people. There's a lot of my friends who would, but John was the one that helped me through a lot of stuff early on in my life. I was going through some bad stuff, but again, we all go through bad things. But I'm not going into any details on that. But he knows, and you know, the people in my friends group know as well. They all know much I love them. They all know how much I care about them. They all know much how much this, and I know how much this is painful for them. But you know. Chris with me today, which that, that means more than anything, to be honest. It's not something you want to take the person you love more than anything in the world, when you to see. Because it's not a nice thing to see, and it's not going to be nice soon either, you know. It's not going to be a nice thing to, 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 to sit down and see me literally no immune system, probably too ill to bloody move. I'll be lucky to get out of bed, you know. It's not going to be nice for you to see. But she sticks by me. She puts puts up with it. She's not puts up with it. She puts up with. She's gonna have to. But she'll put up with, with with me on a bad day. Which and she knows I'm not a nice person on a bad day. But I was grumpy today within the treatment because I didn't have a fag for six and a half hours. It's not her fault. I didn't have a fag. I can hardly really, let's be honest, go out of a cancer unit with a bloody drip full of chemotherapy and go and have a fag in the car park. You know, I mean, if that's not taking a piss, I don't know what would be. It's been, yeah, it's been a, it's been a weird, it's been a weird day. It's, I'm glad, I am glad it started. I really am. I mean, last night I was really nervous about it. Shit myself, to be quite honest, because I didn't know, you know, I've never had this before. I don't know what, I don't know what it feels like. I don't know how, you know, when it goes in. I mean, I found parts today when my hands were, my hand was really cold with things going in. 
again, it's on a drip, so it's not an injection. It's not rammed in. It's just gradually put in over the space of an hour and a half for one type of thing, 30 minutes for another, an hour and a bit for another, and it just gets, you know, there's... There was, I mean, there was rocks of different things. I think there's five or six different things I had infused in, which you know, there's antibiotics, there's saline, there's potassium, there's there's all, there's all these things that they, you know, that they've got to put in in place because, especially when my immune system disappears, then I need as much help as I can for my body to get back to at least a working immune system, let alone it being fully working, just working. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to see people now, the only people I see now is Chris and Jade, because they live here, I won't be seeing anybody now until I'm well, I won't, because I, I don't want to risk it, I can't risk putting myself in a position where it can kill me, basically, there's no, there's no being around the bush there, you know, it'll be a position where I can be really susceptible to anything, and these anythings can cause so much damage, including death, so... I can't, I can't see people. I can do video chats with people and stuff like that, but I can't meet people face to face. Which, you know, that's that's just the way it is. Um, obviously my next bit now, I would say my next video is gonna be next week after my next treatment. It's a shorter treatment, but it's adding more to chemo, or adding more chemicals to my body to kill this bloody cancer which it's going to start knocking in or kicking in next week bad by the signs of it so I've got to prepare myself for that um, again as the underlying message is and it always has been in these videos I had a guy pop to me in Tesco's a couple of days in my shop I'd never seen him before in my life and he just comes straight up and he's like oh, I'm really sorry to to interrupt you because you're shopping he said but I've, I've watched your videos you know and what an amazing thing you're doing to try and get people to check themselves and that's all I want so you know as I've said on every video and I will continue to say you know your body better than you you know everything about your body how it works how it feels if something is different something is different more than once something is different for a bit longer than you should really leave it please go and get it checked out go down your doctors if your doctors say oh blah blah blah, blah and you're not happy get a second opinion you're allowed to, you know, you don't don't take the first opinion if you still think there's something wrong, get a second opinion. Get yourself checked, get yourself sorted. More because, really, and to be honest, I don't want anybody to have to go through this shit. No one. I, don't, I wouldn't wish this on the, on the worst person I hated in the world. I wouldn't want this. Wish it on anybody. You know, it's, it's emotionally, it's it's unbelievable. It's draining. It, it emotionally drains you. It's not just you, it emotionally drains as well. It drains, emotionally drains you, your family, your friends, everybody that you know and everybody that you love and care about that care about you. It, it affects them. It affects everybody. And for the sake of going to the doctors and getting checked, you can stop all this. You can stop any of this pain and heartache for people. You know, unfortunately for me, I didn't. And this is now the consequences of my actions. This is what me ignoring things and brushing things under the carpet and just making excuses has done. This is another part of it, unfortunately. That's another thing that hasn't helped. But again, that's my choice to do it. I wasn't forced to do it. So, you know, but that isn't, this is no one else's fault but mine. Same as you not getting yourself checked out of something. If you don't, if you've got the opportunity to do it, you don't. It is your fault that you haven't been. Nothing's been done because you're the person that holds all the cards to get it done. Doctor can't just out of the blue ring you up and go, "Oh, just checking if you're alright." No, no, you ring them, you ring them, you ask them, you get an appointment. You don't like it, don't agree with it, get a second opinion. Just get yourself checked out. Again, please like and share and subscribe to this video for as many, you know, as many people as in the world that can see it. Just get it out there. Just get the message out. Just get people to understand a simple thing of a check with a doctor could, let's be honest, save your life because my life's never going to be the same again never ever ever my life has changed, my life changed 50 days ago and my life is going to be changed now for the rest of my life even when the cancer's gone I've got all my surgery to come now and once my surgery's done I've then got to adjust to life with a, with a bag 
it's not simple. It's gonna be. It's, my life has changed, and it's changed for the worst in the lot of ways. The the plus side is I'll still be alive. So you know, there's the biggest bonus there is I'm not dead. But it's, you know, for something simple, just please go and get yourself checked out. On a final note, though, before I go, I treated myself to. I thought I needed something, something I love, but something that means a bit. So I thought for a, for a treatment t-shirt for a t-shirt I can wear for treatment I've decided to get myself this terminate my cancer get rid of it kill it terminate a lot of it so I'll keep everybody up to date and I'll do another video in about a week so uh, thank you very much for watching